Welcome to the AI for Good Global Summit here in Geneva. My next guest is Cathy Kobe. She is a partner in EY's risk practice, advising clients on the risk and control implications of legacy and emerging technologies. Cathy, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Charlotte. So Cathy, to start with, AI, can it be a force for good? How can it be used to help deliver the UN Sustainable Development Goals? Well, I think one of the great things that AI is, um, is really good for is actually um, synthesizing data into information. And if you think about all the areas where better information, um, more um, equitable um, collection of information can help the SDGs. So if you think about just education, for, for example, um, being able to um, really understand um, each student individually in regards to what are they best able to learn, how can they learn, and then um, there's some great applications of using AI to basically um, um, synthesize a learning program for them. And so if we could now do that for every student around the world in their language, um, in their context, um, that could be, be so um, beneficial in regards to bringing up the education levels, which then impacts poverty and the ability to get a meaningful workforce. And similar advances like that are also available in health in regards to individuals that are in very remote locations that don't have access to great health care, being able to use AI for diagnoses just through a picture on a phone. Um, so I think that's where there are some great uses of uh, AI. So as we use AI more and more in our daily lives, what impact do you expect it to have on, on society and individuals overall? Well, to me, I've always viewed AI as any technology is very agnostic. It's the, um, it's the intention behind um, its development. It's the use cases that are built. And my concern, you know, in my role in kind of focusing on trust AI is that the functionality being developed for AI, I think is outpacing the governance model around it. Really having impactful conversations about, um, you know, what is this going to be used for? What kind of um, secondary impacts could it have? Um, are there um, areas of discrimination where we're building something that isn't going to be available or accessible to um, everyone within the world? Um, and so I think that um, we need to kind of need to think about as a society um, to put some governance to each have um, a participation participative role in regards to determining how we want to use this technology how and um, and the, some of the defining the problems so I think a lot of this technology starts with defining what problems you want to solve and so far you know there's some criticisms that a lot of those problems are being designed in the uh, scientific labs, which are not very um, diverse right now. Um, you know, less than 20% of, of, um, of the developers are women. Uh, there's a very low participation from a number of minority groups around the world. Um, disabled individuals are not as, as involved. And so um, I think it's, as a society, having um, those people at the design table, because they'll come to it with different problems and say, well, for my local experience, this is what I need AI to do for me. And um, if those problem statements get developed, um, I think that the technology companies will find them, uh, will find the ability to, um, to solve them. So to develop AI systems and solutions safely, everyone should be included. It's a collaborative project, sure. isn't yeah. it? It is. It is very much inclusive. And I think that there also needs to be um, a trust um, behind that, because if the users perceive that um, this is being developed in a development uh, lab without my participation, that the company that is sponsoring it is, you know, you know, a kind of a black box to me, just as the technology itself can be, um, it may not get adopted. And so a lot of people have said, well, you know, it's, it's interesting that people can give it, be given very strong evidence that an AI health diagnostic system is up to 10 to 20% more accurate than uh, doctors themselves, but they don't, they don't trust it. Um, they, can't, they can't have a relationship with it. And as well, they do realize that it does make mistakes and they don't quite understand where those mistakes could occur. Could it happen to me? Can I, can I ask questions on how it made its diagnosis? And so I think we also need to think about from that perspective, because we have great intentions and we can provide the technology, but if you don't provide the, the framework around it, the governance frameworks, the accountability frameworks, um, you won't get the adoption rates that will really allow it to have the full impact that it can have. Cathy, thank you very much. Thank you.